Welcome in. This exercise is sometimes called gallop. It's a classic diddle exercise. When we talk about um, drags and diddles, if we go back to sort of traditional, often drags are played in this kind of method where there's a quiet one leading on to another, another note. So rather than this called, call this a drag exercise, I tend to call this a diddle exercise. Now this isn't, isn't a set in stone rule, but generally when we play diddles, they're gonna be the same height and velocity as all the other notes around them. So it would be more like this. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in this particular exercise. So if we look at the first line, you can see that what we've got is we've got some right-handed diddles. And then we move it across to be left-handed diddles. And then hopefully you get an idea of why it's called gallop because it's got that kind of, sounds like a horse running kind of sound. Two, three, four. Now what we're after here is we're after the same heights, whichever height you decide to play. I, I, I like to play these pretty high. I'm after the same sound. I want my sticks to sound the same when I'm playing the different patterns. So these are pitch matched, they're not quite perfect, but I'm trying to get it so it's exactly the same. And I'm trying to get the distance between those notes perfect. So I don't want, I want it to be a lot more mechanical than that. Now the reason I choose the word mechanical is not because I want it to, to, to particularly sound mechanical, that, that kind of sounds metallic. What I'm talking about here more is that because it's so slow at the moment, I want it to be, be almost placing every note as if, as if my arm's kind of a robot arm. So I'm doing like, as opposed to how I want to play it on a little bit faster, a little bit looser and more legato. Now both of those are actually legitimate ways of playing the same exercise, so maybe a good method would be to practice it legato but also staccato so i'm a little bit more staccato okay so let's go to the second line all we do is we just half everything and it now sounds like this and again one more time for you Obviously I'm playing this slow, it could be. It doesn't have to be slow, right? I tend to use this exercise though to practice my diddles um, when I'm practicing them slow. And then the next line then, what we start to get now is we get one of each, which means we get one of the right hands, and then one of the left hands, which gives you this pattern. And we're playing that four times, as in like one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, and a release at the end. Two, three, four. And then at the end, what we do to finish all the exercise off is we go to a full diddle roll. And again, we're on the same velocity, heights. And that's the whole thing. So I'll play the exercise once all the way through, then you can go away and practice this. Right now, for those guys who are wondering, mm, what did he mean when he said legato and staccato? I just wanna make sure that I clear that up. If I play the same speed, but a little bit looser, a little bit more bouncy, everything's gonna be a bit lower. I'm using a bit more rebound and less of the... So the extremes would be playing like this. As compared to this. And so I'm somewhere in the middle of those two. So that pattern at the end, some drum lines will do that shorter, some will do it longer, some will play the first part twice, so I might go repeat. Strings 
straight into the end. So there's lots of variations you can come up with of this same exercise. The main thing that you take from this today is that it's a great way of us practicing our right-handed diddles and our left-handed diddles and then allowing us to play the same quality when we played both of the hands together. One more time for you. exercise so sometimes when I play it I might play that ending roll a little bit shorter a little bit longer as I said if you've got a drum line and you're teaching them this exercise just make sure they know how long it is and you'll be fine see you next time